a look at a, at a particularly interesting circuit that we're going to solve with mesh analysis that has a dependent source in it. I want to take a look and figure out how do we solve this. Now, one could imagine solving with also mesh analysis, which or a node analysis, but we're going to really try for a mesh analysis here. And just to kind of, this gives you a way to kind of see what the different aspects of this might be, particularly given that I've got a dependent current source dependent on a voltage. So what are the various pieces that we notice when we look at the circuit? Well, the various first thing we need to do is we need to identify all the currents. All right, so we identify the currents, which are going to be my meshes. So there's I1, I2, I3, and I4. And we're going to, so therefore with four of them, I'm going to have a um, four by four matrix in as a resistance. I'm going to have a four inputs on the current that I'm going to, or four outputs on the current I'm going to solve for. And then I'm going to have something voltage-ish. Now, we may find out that those, those responses may be a little different, so be aware of that. What are a couple things I know about this structure? Well, right off the bat, I know that I4 goes this way. I've got a current source going the other way. So I know that I4 is going to be equal to minus IA. First, and that really sets a whole set of different possibilities. The second thing is I have to then figure out I've got this I2 and I3 are related to this current source here. In fact, it'll be I3 minus I2 is going to be this dependent current source output. And you think, all right, well, but how do I figure out what is VB? Well, VB is the voltage across this resistor. And knowing that, I realize that I3 minus I4 gives me a way to talk about VB. So I can take VB, substitute that in for VB here, and then relay the I2 and I3, and all of a sudden I get this is my relationship. So now I've actually got four equations. I've already got two of them. So I'm in really good shape here. So now I just need to deal with a couple more. And so those two become the lower two elements in my matrix. I need two more of them. Well, the first one is a very straightforward one that I can figure out from this mesh around I1. I'm going to have the voltage source VA, R1, and then R3, which has I1 and I2. So I would imagine I'd have the classic rule of I get the sum of the two resistors. Again, this matrix is R, I, and V. So it's a matrix form of Ohm's law. Okay, and so as a result, I get this one. The one that's between the two meshes is R3, and it's going to give me a minus sign. And then there's no other connections to the other meshes, so it's zero. Great, so now I've got three out of four. What do I do with the last one? Well, this current source causes some headaches, and so what I'm really looking at at the, at the upper one is doing what is called a super mesh. Now, that doesn't mean that it's somehow more important or something else, but it just turns out that I need to then go you know, go to more than one of the mesh nodes. So I'm going to have I2, and this is going to be for sort of the first part of the mesh aspect, like what is related to I2 and I1. And then I'm going to be looking at I3 for the other part of it, which is then also going to ask what is the overlap of I3 and I4. So you definitely get what looks like diagonal elements-ish for I2 and diagonal elements-ish for R4 and R5, and its overlap with I3, I4, and its overlap with I1 and I2 in here. Phew. But this is kind of a way and a rule that happens. Remember that part of the point of this is to that there should be a straightforward algorithmic way to solve any circuit that I'm dealing with. And as a result, if I have any, just a sort of straightforward way, then I can always sit down and write code and make this happen. So we're in pretty good shape there. Well, once I have this, I can simply then plug in values for this entire matrix, and here would be me plugging in those values. And given these resistors, now again, I've normalized this knowing that I'm, I'm dealing with mega ohms and microamps of current, so I1 through I4 will be microamps in the output. Um, and so this is basically a mega ohm in the case, and therefore the units match. So for VA, 1 volt and IA equal to 1 microamp, the solutions I would get for I1 through I4 would be like this. I1, of course, is exactly what was inputted, so there's not terribly a shock there. I3 is about one mic, just a little over one microamp, and the other two are significantly smaller. But this gives me a way to kind of solve this problem and make sure that you know I can again use these matrices to solve it. And again, you can get different matrices to solve the main variables in a problem. Any way you do this that solves it that's accurate is correct.
And this is really kind of a neat concept in terms of these kinds of linear systems.